morning, church. So glad to see everyone here today. I'm going to start with the scripture from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Dan's going to lead us in prayer now. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this beautiful morning and this, uh, this beautiful freedom that we live in. Thank you, Lord, for this day of rest that we've set aside to worship you and connect with you. Just pray that you would, that you would be with us and that your spirit would fill us this morning and that our worship would be um, a beautiful sound to your ears. Please, Lord, bless the, the sermon this morning and continue to work in our lives and in this church the way you have. And we do perceive the, the, the new path in the wilderness that you're creating in this church. And we're excited to see what, you, what you're doing with us and with this, with this church. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand with us. That has, that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise you in the valley. I'll praise you in the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. I'll praise when I'm counting. I'll praise when I'm
everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
surrounding me. Let me pray at your name still. Call the sea to still. Courage in me to still. Every wave at your name. In Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, in silence fear. In Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus,
Father, we just lift up those that are facing financial situations. Father, you are the way maker, and you can help in those situations. Father, for those that are seeking jobs, you are the way maker, and you can help in those circumstances. Father, for those that are mourning, Father, that you give peace, for you are the way maker. The name of Jesus is so powerful. So powerful. Thank you, Chief. Any item discussed at the annual business meeting on Sunday, March the 17th, please forward the item in writing and signed to the church office by Sunday, March the 3rd. God bless you as you prayerfully consider those men and women gifted to fill these important leadership roles. And this is submitted by Marvin Schatz, our board secretary. 
the pastor and I just were refreshed and filled at the pastor's conference. And um, Phil Dorshek, who was here at our congregational meeting um, when we um, voted in our new pastor, he has retired. And so I'm pleased to say that we have the new Director of Finance and Administration for the Alberta Northwest Territory District here with us today. And so I introduce to you our new district financer, and that's Pastor Boniface. And the children can follow me out. <laughs> So if you can now prepare your tithe and offering, and uh, I will uh, want to invite the, the ashes to come here so that we can give. Daryl, you're going to pray. Dear Lord, I want to thank you this, for this day, Lord. Thank you for your love, your blessings, Jesus. Thank you for your tithes and offerings. And, I pray that it would work as a blessing with, for you, Lord, and I just thank you for your love. Amen. Thank you. So thank you so much for your support to this church, and uh, please keep doing that, because as, uh, as I always say, when you do that, you're not just doing for the church, but you're doing for the kingdom of God. And uh, we are doing a lot uh, within the body here, but also out in the community but also internationally and also Canada-wide, supporting missionaries, those who are saving within our country and those who are saving outside of our country. So please keep supporting, and may God bless you. So this morning, uh, we are honored again to be in the house of the Lord. How many of you are privileged to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Okay. Okay. So when we come to God's house, he always has something special for us. And I believe that today he has something special for us. If you believe with me, just shout amen. amen. Thank you. Tim said it to me that just say one amen, don't, two, no, don't say two. Okay, just one amen. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, this was a good week in Banff, and uh, we were refreshed, and, um, and uh, that was really good. We... So the move of the Spirit within the, the pastors you know, and leaders from different churches, and we believe for God's harvest uh, in our district, but also in Canada. So let's keep praying together and serving God together because uh, we are the church. Now, I want to go straight to the Word of God. And uh, back in, uh, in, in, in the fall... Uh, we started the series called Back to Basics. And, uh, and this is important because when you talk about basics, you're talking about uh, the essentials, the things which are important for an individual and in this respect important for the church. And uh, we need as a church, as Bethel, to make sure that we are not drift away from what is basics. Because if we get away from that, then we are going to lose the meaning of us as a church. So it is important that we understand what are the basics and why is it important to keep the basics? And how can we keep the basics? My throat is not that good today, but I'll, I know God is going to be helping me. Now today, I want to talk about God's presence, or in His presence. And I want to read a key verse from the book of Exodus, chapter number 33 and verse number 15. And if you can read that, can you please or would you please read with me? I'll count one, two, three, and then let's read together. 
One, two, three. And he said to him, If your presence will not go with me, do not bring us from here. Now this is Moses. God has given him a role to lead his people to the promised land. And uh, as they walk or as they make their way to the promised land, if you read that particular chapter, number 33, from verse number 1, you will realize that now God gets into a point where he's kind of annoyed. He's kind of feeling bad about his people. And he's telling Moses that, okay, he's ordering or directing him that, okay, I order you to go. Go to the promised land. Yes, go. You have my permission. Go. But I will just send an angel to go with you. I will not go with you. Why? If you read verse number 3, it says, Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey. Yes, I send you there. Go. But I will not go up among you, lest I consume you on the way, because you are a stiff, naked people. Naked. Not naked. Naked. Sorry. Not stiff naked, stiff neck. <laughs> Shout amen. Shout amen. amen. And you just have to get used to my amen, you know? Maybe for one month and so, which I'm going to be here. <laughs> but I'll still be coming back. Huh? Once in a while. So he's telling him that you have my permission to go, you have my permission. But you know what? I'm just going to send an angel with you. I don't think I'm going to go with... My presence will not go with you because you are a stiff-necked people. So just go. I have a land for you full of milk and honey and everything. Go. Now, Moses, understanding or realizing the importance of God's presence, understanding that you can't be out of God's presence even in a single second and be safe. So he's praying and telling God, God, if your presence will not go with me, do not bring us from here. Do not bring us from here. Because I know and I understand how important your presence is. And friends, I want you to tell you one thing very important. As a church, we are called to be a place where God desires to dwell. This is a place where God desires to dwell. That's why he's having us here as a church. This is his dwelling place. But then if we miss that turn and then keep moving on our own, he will let us go, but his presence will never be with us. And if you read, you know, if you read from the book of Hebrews, the Bible tells me that, you know, Chapter number 8, that the time is coming, declares the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, you know. And he's talking about a new covenant that, you know, they will be my people and I will be their God. This is his desire. That when he calls us or when we are called as Bethel, he wants to be our God and that we may be his people and we may experience his presence in this house. But if we are just a church, it doesn't matter the label we have outside there. Trust me, even if we call ourselves, you know, the Pentecost or the whatever, you know, there are big names out there. But if we miss that reality that we need God's presence among ourselves, we need God's presence in everything we are doing, 
We need God to take control over each and everything within the church. We'll just be as good as a social club out there. But once we allow his presence to be with us, then we will see him moving with us day after day, time after time, step after time, and we can see him doing amazing things, using this church for his own glory. But that's going to happen only and only if we allow his presence in our life. And I always tell God, I've been preaching since 1992, but trust me, sometimes I'm struggling. Even on Saturday, I don't know exactly what I'm going to be saying to God's people. Emily knows that. And I told Emily, just bear with me. Sometimes I'll send you my things to, you know, my PowerPoint with the very late hours because I'm struggling in my heart. Why? Because I don't want to do things on my own. I don't want to stand here and use my own experience of being a pastor for over 25 years and speak my own words, but I want God's presence in my life. I want to say what God wants his people to hear. I want to do what God wants his people to do. That has been my prayer, that God, I need your presence in my life. And friends, we need God's presence in this church. Because if we allow his presence in this church, the Bible is telling me that if you read verse number 13 there, it says that now therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways. That's Moses. That I may know you in order to find favor in your sight Consider too that this nation is your people. And he prays that God, I need your presence because without God's presence, you will never get gain favor to people and outside there because you are just on your own. But I'm telling you, if you move with his presence, then everybody out there will say, those are God's people. God's in that is in that church. You can see the move of God over there. And that's exactly what we need. Now we are in the process of coming up with new board members. We need God's presence within the board. When it comes to decision making, they know, they are here, they know. That's what we talk over and over that, you know, in everything we do here, we need God's move, that we will do everything according to God's will, God's direction, because this is his church. And Moses says, Lord, because this nation is your people. Now, because this nation is your people, I won't really make another move without you. I need every step I take that you are there because this nation is your people. Friends, this is God's church. I said before when I was starting like this series, I said, yes, we may look like we have some organization and administrative issues, but we are not an organization out there. We are God's church. We are his own people. And everything we do, we have to do and get favor before God because if we don't have that favor before God, then we'll do everything on our own and trust me, we'll struggle on our way. Now, verse number 14, God is telling Moses, now my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And that's the good thing about God's presence. When God's presence go with you, then you will have rest. Rest in this context here, it means you will, you know, you will settle. 
It doesn't mean that hard times will not come in your life. But when hard times come, you'll still be settling because God's presence is within the church. Doesn't mean that you'll not face storms in life. You'll still face storms, but you will settle down and say, God, I know I am going through the storm, but I am still with you. And the Bible tells me that if you read the story of Joseph, go read the story. Everywhere, you know, they bring the story and they say, but God was with Joseph. You, know, you remember that, right? So he goes, they sell him to Egypt, you know. But the Bible tells me, but God was with Joseph. And then he goes to Potiphar's house and uh, he stays there and he's facing a lot of issues there. And then later the Bible says, but God was with Joseph. And they threw him to prison for something he's never done. But the Bible says, but God was with Joseph. Have you ever read that? And then he goes through the prison, within the prison, and, uh, you know, struggling in the prison. But the Bible says, but God was with Joseph. And then he goes out of prison, and then God gives him favor in the state house. And he becomes the prime minister. And the Bible says, but God was with Joseph. That is my prayers, friends. That in every situation this church goes through, I want that word, but God was with Bethel. Yes, they went through some drought, but God was with Bethel. Maybe they went through some hard times, but God was with Bethel. And if we allow God's presence, Things will settle, regardless what comes our way, but we'll see that divine settlement because of his presence. Because of his presence. And the Bible says here, verse number 16, For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight? And your people. And how will I know that I am distinct, like a different, a separated, special from others? In the world today, friends, we have a lot of churches out there. There wouldn't be any meaning for someone to come to Bethel and make this his church if there is no God's presence within the church. But something which will make us distinct, like a different from others, is God's presence within his church. And it is my prayer that when someone walks in there with burdens in her heart or is his heart, then when he comes in here, he walks out of the building refreshed, relieved. Why? Because of God's presence in this house. And it is my prayer that when the worship team comes here and they sing here, they won't just sing because they're experienced singers. Sorry for the worship team. I'm just, I'm just preaching. But when they come here, even the peak of the songs, like whatever song they pick, you don't just wake up in the morning and say, oh, I'm going to sing this song. You have to say, God, I have this privilege to go lead worship on Sunday. If your presence will not go with me, I'm not ready to lead on Sunday. 
Show me your ways so that I can follow that. And I tell you, you may, God may, may, may just give you like a 18th, whatever, 15th century hymn. You know the hymns, right? But if that is what came from God and you come here just sing a hymn and you will see God's presence and touch to his people. Why? Because it wasn't just like a pick and sing. But God's presence was in that process. And I remember in the Old Testament when they were dedicating Solomon's temple, you know, the, the Levites, you know, the singers were singing and the Bible says when they were all singing in unison, unison, when everybody was one, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the whatever, you know, keyboard, whatever, one, that thing there, I don't know how you call it, bang or something, dango or whatever, something, I don't know. One, drum, one, singers, one. And everybody was like, because you're good and your mess endures forever. They were all lifting their voice. And the presence of God was within the temple. The Bible tells me that the glory of God came down and filled the temple. And even the priest was not in a position to minister because of the glory of the Lord which filled up the temple. And I've seen this in my life, you know. Years back, I was pastoring a church in Africa. We had a very powerful worship team and I, I, I kept telling them that, guys, when you come here, you have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So they had about five songs, like they, you know, normally they have five something songs. But then they came to the stage, they were starting singing the first song. You can't imagine. They never stopped singing that song. And they never they moved to the other songs. Just one song, you know, and there was no room for another song because the Spirit of God took charge. And they sang the song and, you know, everybody was flat there, you know. I, I, I wasn't able to preach that day. I just ended up like praying for people. How can you preach while the presence of God is already full in the house? So that's what we need. As a church, we need to say, God, we can't move forward without your presence in this church. Because that is what is going to make us distinct to differentiate us from others out there. God's presence. And when the presence of God is in the house, you know, I said a few Sundays ago that things will move beyond normal. We will experience like a supernatural working of God within the house, within the church. And they will see things we've never seen before. We will see God speaking in a different way that we have never seen it before. And, and we will be like, what is this? What is this? What is this? But you know what? That is God's moving within his people and his house. And when the presence of God moves in this house, we'll see God bringing people, from, you know, because they will be like, that's a place to go. This place is going to be running like a refuge for people out there. But this is what you have to know, friends. When we allow God's presence to move in the house, you know, to God to dwell in his house, it will come a time, a time when God will bring a lot of people from out there. A lot. Now, as a church, we have to be a welcoming church. 
Can you say amen? And this is very important because God might bring some people, you know, scary people. Yes, I'll give you a story you know, in the Bible. You remember Saul, Paul, right? Before, before he became Paul, he was Saul, right? He was, a, he was a murderer. You know that, right? And he was torturing people of God. Killing people. And he was moving around with a permit to kill people. Now he got, or he experienced an encounter with God on his way to Damascus. And he, 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 he's facing that encounter with Jesus. And Jesus transformed his life. And he's sending him to what was the house? What was that house again? And he goes there. So the people who see him like, oh no, no, no. We don't want this guy. He's a killer. And then God says, no. He is my chosen instrument to bring good news to the Gentiles. So God will bring people when his presence dwells in the house. Some people we thought there were nobody out there, but he will bring them here and they will become somebody in his house. Now, as a church, we have to be a welcoming church. Welcoming church. A church is just like a hospital, my friend. When you're injured and you get injured and injured, you go to the hospital. And the doctors will find a way to make sure that you become better. And that's how the church, the house of God is. Those who come to the house of God, God did not come to those who are healthy. The Bible says, Jesus did not come to those who are healthy. He came to those or for those who are unhealthy. So that when they get an encounter with him, then he will turn them the other way around and they will become better in God's kingdom. Today, we have more than half of the New Testament letter from Paul, someone who was a murderer, rejected, scary. You, you don't want to stay with him. But God says, this is my chosen instrument to bring good news to Gentiles, to people. Let's allow God's presence in his house. Let's not dare to move even a single step without his presence. Yes, we have been here for more than 70 years as a church. It's just because of his presence. And if he doesn't go with us from here on, I will tell you, friends, we may have a very nice building and very good programs, but they will become as good as a social club out there. But we need his presence. We need to allow him to take control of everything we do. And we need to tell him, have your ways above our ways. And once we allow his presence, trust me, that is going to make us distinct. And people will say, those people in that church, there is something different. And they will come here and they will experience that unique encounter with Jesus. Let's all stand up. And I will invite now the worship team to come here.
Let's sing this song which they prepared, I believe. And then if you, if you feel that I need that encounter with God, I need that presence of God in my personal life, in my family, in my marriage, the altar is open. You, can, you may come here and then we will pray together. But friends, a single move without his presence can totally damage your life. A single move without God's presence in this church. And I'm saying this, but I know I have few Sundays before I make my way out of this church. But if you forget anything I said since when I got here more than a year ago, just remember these words. A single move without his presence in this house will be a detrimental to this house forever. We don't want to get into that. We want to allow his presence, his presence to move among us. Let's sing this song. And then maybe you need God's presence in your personal life. You need to see his presence in your family, your marriage, anything. Just come here and then we'll pray together. You please come here, pray.
We need some prayers like the altar is still open. We need God's presence in our lives. But we need God's presence in this church. It's my prayer that when you come to this church here, you'll go out with some of the answers, or most of the answers you have had in your life about your future. As we are still praying here, I want to give you a testimony so that you know that when you move in God's presence, how things can be in his house. Back in September or somewhere, no, not September, November, we had, uh, back in November, we had, uh, we had a prayer summit here. You remember that? And we had Tim Ulmer came to minister. How many remember that? And he came here, and in the evening we had a prayer session here and he said, let me, God said some few words to me through him. And he said, record this. And I remember Savannah was recording through her phone. And it's still there. And I didn't know anything. And then he's saying that, okay, God is going to put you in a position of leading other pastors. And I'm like, what is this? I'm still in bed. I don't know how things will be and so on and so forth. And then later on, he says, actually, this just came into my heart. Watch out in Banff. God is going to do something for you in Banff. There will be like a Banff thing. And that's what, you know, if, uh, if you watch that video, that's what it says. And I didn't know anything. Then I'm going to Banff. Then they elect me to become the director of uh, finance and administration for the district. So you see that when we allow God's presence in the house, some of the things you are not sure about your future, then you'll get those answers from within God's house. And that was way back, even I didn't know anything that I don't know what's going to happen in Banff. And then I'm going, I go to Banff and then I, you know, they elect me as a, as, as a, you know, to replace Phil Doroshek, the one who was here last time. And I'm like, What? So this is when we allow his presence in our life, in the life of the church. You will come through that door with some of the questions in your life, and then you will go out with answers as to where God is leading you. Let's all put our hands in a posture of receiving before God as we pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in a posture of receiving. And we come with this prayer just like Moses, that if your presence will not go with us, let's not even move ahead without your presence. We need your presence in our individual lives. We need your presence as couples, as families, as a church. We need your presence with us. We need your presence in our worship team, in the children's ministry, in the men's ministry, in the ladies' ministry. We just need your presence. And as a church, we say, if your presence will not go with us, 
Do not move us from here. We need your presence. We thank you, Jesus. In the wonderful name of Jesus, if you believe with me, say amen. amen. God bless you, friends, and uh, you may just say like high five to a few people and uh, see you on Wednesday for our family night.
Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there, holding an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. One with himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased by his blood, my life is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my Savior and my To see the dawn of the darkest day, Christ on the road to Calvary, tried by sinful men, torn and beaten then, nailed to a cross of wood. This the path. on your face bearing the awesome weight of sin every bitter thought every evil deed crowning your blood stained love this the path Took the blame, bore the wrath we stand forgiven at the cross. Now the daylight breaks, now the ground beneath quakes as its 
Sovereign, I am free. Death is crushed to death. Life is mine to live. One through yourself. 